refer to God's people as sheep, to the body of believers as a flock, and to our Lord as the shepherd. But because our church or our churches are filled with imperfect and broken people, we may encounter a wolf disguised in sheep's clothing or a wolf disguised in shepherd's clothing. Often we think that abuse involves violence, but we now know that that isn't always the case, don't we? Now I'm going to need help for those of you. I see a few of you still in your vehicles. So for those of you in your vehicles, help me out please. If you're happy and you know it, count two times. <laughs> Thank you. If you're still in your vehicles, and if you are alive and happy to be alive, count three times. There we go. And if you are with us and say, end it now, I want you to hum two and one short. Very good. Oh, no, no. They listen so well. Thank you for your cooperation. Now, for those of us out here, we can't be left out, okay? So, if you're happy and you know it, say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you're happy to be alive, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And if you know that you know that you know that this is the place to be, let me hear you shout the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome everyone to this motorcade and rally where we had a kickoff session last evening with an on-time word from Dr. Charmaine Emmanuel. How many of you were able to listen to her? What a word that was last evening. And as we continue in this vein, today, under the theme, Wolves and Sheep's Clothing, Seventh-day Adventists are taking a stand as we all say no to violence. Mrs. Anne Marie Davis, spouse of the Prime Minister, Commonwealth of the Bahamas, Honorable Michelle Adderley, President of the Senate, Pastor Leonardo Ramming, Executive Secretary, South Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, Mrs. Elaine Sands, Gender Expert, Department of Gender and Family Affairs. Representatives from the various nonprofit organizations and civic groups. Mr. Joel Lewis, Permanent Secretary, Department of Social Services and Department of Gender and Family Affairs. Mrs. Mahalia Navarty John, Justice, Unity, Generosity Service Incorporated, also known as JUDS. Ms. Marissa Mason Smith, Zonta Club of New Providence. Ms. Tarina Cunningham, Executive Secretary, Straw Incorporated, Center for Young Women. Minister Brenda Harris Pinder, President, Women United in Prayer. Ms. Kimberly Dean, Assistant Secretary, the Anglican Church Women Council. Inspector Kendra Wallace Williams, Domestic Violence Unit, Royal Bahamas Police Force. Pastors and members, media house representatives, South Bahamas Conference women's ministry leaders and their teams, visitors from the community, platform participants, good afternoon. Good afternoon. And it now is a global initiative to raise awareness and ad advocate for the end of violence around the world. It aims to mobilize Seventh-day Adventists around the world and invite other community groups to join in to resolve this worldwide issue. This initiative, with which it stands to more than 200 countries and territories, was launched in October 2009 in partnership between the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, also known as ADRA, a prominent humanitarian organization, and the Department of Women's Ministries of the Seventh-day Adventist Church two entities that are representative of the Adventist Church. And it now is the most important stand the Seventh-day Adventist Church has ever taken regarding violence against men, women, and children. Through this campaign, more than 15 million Adventist Church members, men, women, and children, are expected to create a global movement, and that's what's happening today to be mobilized within their own communities, where each person will actively work
work to create awareness and share solutions on ways to end this global problem. A Seventh-day Adventist continued to take a stand to say no to violence in all its forms. Let us encourage each other to be the voice for the voiceless and in solidarity shout and say, end it now. Welcome. Good evening, one and all. On behalf of the Executive Committee, the Administration of the South Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, the principal, the pastors, administration, teachers, staff, students of Bahamas Academy, ABC manager, and staff, I greet each of you this afternoon in the precious and powerful name of Jesus Christ. Our president, Pastor Kenny DeVoe, and Sister Darlene would have liked to be here with us, but they are off the island, and so we continue with this program. Our CFO, Elder Wukel Damasis and his family have joined me and my family here this afternoon as we desire you to know that we support this initiative and that we want to give voice to ending abuse now. We do not want to see it in our churches, in our homes, on our jobs. We want every member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church to stand up and speak out and say, end it now. The truth is that this is not in accordance with God's word. And so we do not believe that we should exalt anything that is against the word of God. Today, as we focus on wolves in sheep clothing, it is our prayer, it is our hope that none of us would be wolves in sheep clothing. We want to speak up and to speak out because even though we have imperfect people, broken people in our churches, we want this country and this world to know that the Seventh-day Adventist Church does not support violence in any form or fashion. It must stop now. Today, I want to encourage you to unite with your leaders, to unite with me and all of, other, all of us in prayer and work as we end it now. End it now, end it now. I want to take just a moment to acknowledge, and I know it has been done already, but I want to acknowledge at this time the presence of our guest speaker, Mrs. Anne Marie Davis. It is an absolute joy to have you here with us and we await your remarks this afternoon. I also want to recognize the presence of one of our own, Jay Lachelle Adley, President of the Senate, who is with us and she is assisting so kindly with this program. Thanks to one and all, those of you who have come to support this rally, it is our prayer, it is our hope that you would enjoy and that you will be blessed and that you will leave here motivated to end it now. Thank you so much to all of those, my cousin who I told her I wanted to say protocol having already been established because she established it. <laughs> and thank you so much, um, Secretary, Mr. Secretary. Right now, we're gonna invite the President of the Senate, like Pastor Ramik said, Mrs. Ms. Lachelle Adley, to the microphone, as she will introduce our speaker for this afternoon, Mrs. Anne Marie Davis. It is often said that anyone can steer the ship, but it takes a real leader to chart the course. A beautiful and brilliant good afternoon is extended to everyone, and indeed, it is a privilege for us to exercise our constitutional freedom to be here today. And to everyone in the cars, and to everyone in the sound of my voice, we have assembled through our shared sense of responsibility to address common issues that adversely impact our communities and our nationhood. We have come together 
to introduce today's keynote speaker. She is indescribable. She is indomitable. She is incomparable. And yes, she is unstoppable. A woman whose unselfish record of service to the Commonwealth of the Bahamas is awe-inspiring. She's a woman of faith, a woman with strong spiritual convictions. Her firm belief in Matthew 25, 40, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me, significantly motivates her to seek out and to assist the downtrodden, the less fortunate, cancer and AIDS victims, victims of domestic violence and molestation. Her mantra is, if I can help somebody as I travel along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or song, if I can show somebody he is traveling wrong, then my living would not be in vain. This mantra leads her to support various charitable organizations, at-risk group, youth, and the elderly. She doesn't just talk the talk, but she actively walk the walk. She has a heart of gold. A stellar record of service is appreciated and respected both internationally and domestically and regionally. On the 21st of August, 2023, her office, the office of the spouse, and let me pause here, let me go off to, this ain't no pretty office. This is a working office called the office of the spouse, but I hasten to add that she was doing everything she was doing before she got to the office of the spouse. The office of the spouse organized a high level side event at the 13th Commonwealth Women's Affairs Ministers Meeting held at Atlantis. This event was chaired by our keynote speaker. A panel of local experts were assembled and spoke on the topic gender-based violence, human rights, and social justice. I am pl pleased to say that I co-moderated that event. And when she called me, I was trying to you know, say yes slow, but God knows I want to say yes right away a thousand times. So I thank you for that opportunity. Undoubtedly, a remarkable lady who has power, influence, but is known mostly for her common touch, her ability to connect with persons from all walks of life and shine light in the dark corners. She is an accountant extraordinaire the beautiful and hard-working wife of our Prime Minister, Office of the Spouse, and First Lady of our Commonwealth of the Bahamas, and someone I am truly elated to call my dear friend. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a happy Sabbath welcome to our keynote speaker, a real leader who's charting the cause. This is Anne Marie Davis. Let us feel, let us make a feel welcome. Thank you so much for coming here today. Uh, I got a little excited just before she comes. <laughs> There is special music, a trio, by Natalo Mackey, Dominic Maltry, and Charapane Burnside. Let's make them feel welcome. And the next voice after the trio will be that of our first lady. And please, when she ascends the podium, let's stand to make her feel welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone.
think about it being a male, more so because uh, we have most of the problems we have today is because of the male. Like, you know, we have, whereas more than three women are violated or abused, you have like one in 10 men, the same thing happening to them. So the figures make us want to work harder to protect our women and young girls. Okay, so men, I have nothing against you. I, I don't see any of you here as a wolf in sheep's clothing, otherwise you would not be here today to help us end it now. But I'm only talking to the men because of the statistics that we have, okay? So, again, I stand on the protocol established already. Miss Sands, hello my dear. <laughs> okay, so Matthew chapter 7 verse 15 says, Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inside they are ferocious wolves. A wolf in sheep's clothing is symbolic for someone who outwardly looks harmless and kind with good intentions, but inside they're full of hate, evil, and deceit. They're very deceitful. Oh, yes. And we have many of these wolves in sheep's clothing around us all today. We have so many around us. Okay, so we have to look out for them. We, these wolves in sheep's clothing, let me tell you what they like to do. They like to take power. They like to take your power from you instead of making you become powerful, empowering you to do good things. They like to take that power away from you so you don't feel like the, on top of the world like you should. They seem sweet on the outside, but you know, they show you their teeth. While they're feeling sweet, they'll be smiling. And you're seeing the teeth and you think it's a good smile. It's a smile, but a lot of times that teeth means they're gritting the teeth, can't wait to get on your neck. All right? So they'll always believe that the good teeth, the teeth that they're showing you is good stuff. Sometimes the teeth that they're gritting can't wait to get their claws on you. All right? And they like to manipulate you through emotions. They'll be telling you some sad story, like something that happened to them. And you'll be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I can't believe that happened to you. I'm so sorry. And you're sorry for them, sorry. And they have you fully covered. They trap you with emotions, all right? And they manipulate you once you start feeling sorry for them. They manipulate you, and they get what they want, get you to do anything, okay? Also, they like to charm you first. They charm you, and then they start showing their true colors. But um, you have to be careful, because while you are being charmed, you have to keep your head on, okay? Yeah. All right. And a lot of times, there are stories. This is another sign. There are stories that they tell you are always full of holes. So you have to listen closely. Because sometimes people might tell you, you know, I want to say the gusset, I want to sack. And three days later, tell you, boy, when I was a QC, I used to do this, that, and the other. And you'll be like, but I told you I want to sack. And they'll be like, shut up. I said QC. I didn't need sack. Last time I went QC. And, you know, I may have you mix up, but you can't say anything. So there are holes in the stories that he's telling you. Once you start hearing this, you'll be like, this guy, ah, stay away, okay? It's because many times, the wolf disguised in sheep's clothing, they can quote the Bible more than you and I. They quote the Bible better than the pastors, you know? And they could say anything better than we thought they could. They could twist God's word even, so that they might even confuse you. And then you don't know what the truth is anymore. You'll be like, but the Bible said so and so. But he said that that means something else. And so you're in a state of confusion. Because they can quote the Bible really good. You know? So you have to watch out for them. This is how you can see them. So. How can we spot 
the wolf in sheep's clothing. How can we see through their deception so we could protect ourselves? First, we can look at these signs to help to detect these wolves in sheep's clothing. They love power. They love themselves. Nobody loves them more than themselves. Listen, they love themselves so much, even if they're with you, and they go out with you, they stop, they leave you by the car, and they'll be walking in the room first. Looking around to make sure everybody see them. Yeah, because they love themselves. Yeah? That's when you were in the back. You didn't reach yet, but they reached before you, so everybody can see them, because they love themselves. And then when they look, this, if they see somebody in the room that look kind of good, they like going after that person already. That time you still coming. All right. Yeah. yeah. Love themselves. You ever see those guys? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, watch out for them. That's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Okay. Especially if someone tells them, oh, you can't help me. They'll be like, who? Who? <laughs> Self-control some more. 
Self-control. You have to be able to develop self-control. This is something you have to practice yeah. because it doesn't come easy. You know, you have to exercise self-control over what you eat, what you do, what you wear. You have to exercise self-control in making decisions on the spot, especially if it's bad for you. Self-control, listening to that inside voice that tells you don't do it. And if you know it doesn't feel right, self-control means you will not do it. So you always have to have your, like I said, your head on. Keep your head on and exercise that self-control, all right? So listen, how we can respond to some of these people when we see them? Look for the signs. Don't be fooled. Look for the signs. And when someone shows you who they are the first time, right. believe it. That's right. Believe it. Don't let them say, oh, that was a mistake. I didn't mean to do that. I, I, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. No, 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 baby. That wasn't me. Listen, yeah. That wasn't me. No, believe it. Look for it to happen again. Or you get on before it happens again, right? Okay. So, if you know the real you, you will know the fakes. You will know them. If you're comfortable with yourselves, you don't compare yourself with others. You don't think you should be better than this one and that one. You don't think you should be caught up in a, some competition that's not healthy for you because you know yourself and you know what you want to achieve in life and you know what you're going for and, and to achieve. You will not be get caught in any situations when wolves and sheep's clothing who come to tell you, I will get you there, baby. You just stick with me. We going there. You have to know your worth. Know who you are. Okay? Don't compare yourself with others. Be strong in your faith. Matthew chapter 7, verse 16 says, You will recognize them by their fruits. God's word is clear. It says, They'll be known by their fruits. Not by how much money they have. Not by how many followers they have. They'll be known by what fruit exists in their lives. All right? Fruits like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and again, that word, self-control. Especially self-control that you will practice. Practice it every day if you have to. Make a conscious decision to practice self-control over your emotions. Examine the circumstances in which you are. Examine what impulse you're feeling. And exercise self-control. The Lord will be there with you. Okay? Then you also have to trust the discernment and the wisdom of God's spirit living through your life. If something tells you, don't go with it. Don't go there. Uh-uh. Don't do it. You better don't do it. That's the Lord talking to you. You know how many times I listen to that little voice? And I have no regrets. When they tell me, no, no, don't go there. No, don't do it. You know, I will pause and say, that's God talking to me. And I walk away. And I have never regretted doing that. I want all of you to have that strength, that inner strength, to obey that inner voice, God's voice telling you, true faith, don't do it, okay? So, you have to continue having your fruits. Uh, so, listen, let's talk about how some of these wolves can destroy our beautiful young ladies in our country. Yeah, I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the violence that's going on here. Yeah, the one that we're going to end now, okay? Yeah, yeah. So, the psalmist David said in Psalm 139 verse 14, I praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth quite well. What does it mean to be wonderfully and fearfully made? What does that mean? You know what it means? Yeah? Fearfully, when translated by the
the Hebrew means with great reverence, heartfelt interest, and respect. That's what fearfully means. Wonderfully means, when translated by the Hebrew, unique and set apart. It means that you're very special. Ladies, turn to your neighbor and say you're wonderfully and fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes, that's right. Listen, you are a masterpiece. That is what wonderfully and fearfully made means. It means that you are a masterpiece. All of you. So listen, now you can tell the next one next to you, I am a masterpiece. I am a masterpiece. That's right. Give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> so masterpiece means that you are outstanding. That you are of great skill or workmanship. Yes, so you can tap yourself on the chest, all of you, and say, I am a masterpiece. That's right. So listen, I want to talk about the victims of abuse and someone who, that you know were of victims of abuse. Because every day, every single day, we hear about women and girls being abused worldwide. And even here in the Bahamas, abuse is normally committed by an intimate partner. An intimate partner, that means somebody you know, somebody close to you. It could be the wolf in sheep schooling. Most of the time it's them. Okay? They imagine that. Partners. Some of these partners who at one time were wolves in sheep schooling. Do you know the United Nations says, this, these are the latest figures, 137,000 women are killed each year worldwide by a member of their family every day. Imagine that. Now imagine that. That's what we're up against. We're up against that here too. That's terrible. Okay? And records also reflect that the increase in domestic abuse, particularly in the two years during the pandemic, COVID, all the health lines, calls to the health lines increased by 500%. We're in trouble here in the Bahamas too. Yeah? The United Nations did a study in 16 countries, not the whole world, and in those 16 countries surveyed, they found that two out of three women were being abused every day. That's double what the normal statistics are. The normal statistics are one in three. But in those 16 countries, the United Nations women found two out of three. So that means if I count one, two, three, that means two of you are getting abused. I mean, of course, not you here, but that is, that is how it could. Could you imagine when you're walking down the road, every three women you see, two of them are being abused. That is so frightening. And guess what is worse? What is worse? Only one in every 10 will report it to the police. That, let's listen. When I, when I read that, I was like, oh God. I was like, goosebumps all over me. Thinking about those women suffering in silence. And then, a few weeks ago, I started to feel better about it because even though we see domestic violence on the increase here, it means that we are having more reporting, right? So we are starting to break the silence yeah. here. I am happy about that. Of course, it's probably increasing, yes. <laughs> of course, post-pandemic, we have had an increase in domestic violence, not just here, worldwide. It's everywhere. But we have to fight. That's why we have increased our fight so much more. We have upped our ante because it has increased here too. Okay? And there are so many myths surrounding domestic violence. Some still believe 
It only happens to other people. It wouldn't happen to me. That is not true. It can happen to anyone. Anyone. Our society and often victims, they have traditionally overlooked the problem. Look the other way. They have a, they're like, oh, I'm not dealing with that. Let me look this way. Some of them denied or they didn't give excuse for the problem. Especially, especially, they go into denial, especially when their partner was a wolf in sheep's clothing, right? They make excuse and they go into denial. But you have to remember, domestic violence follows a pattern. Remember the word, a pattern. The pattern of physical or emotional abusive behaviors, which is done to maintain control over an intimate partner or even a family member. Like some of those words in Chief's story. They are often abusers. <clears throat> they use fear, guilt, shame, intimidation techniques to keep victims under control. Abusers often escalate from verbal abuse. They're escalating from verbal abuse and threats of physical violence to flat out beatings, stressing you out, making you sick, beatings, escalating all the time until sometimes you die. That's how bad it is. So, the physical violence or the threat of physical violence is the most immediate danger, danger. But the long-term emotional and psychological consequences are severe. So knowing and acknowledging the signs, those warning signs and symptoms of domestic violence is the first step. It's the first step. Looking for those warning signs to end it now. Okay? I see quite a bit of young people here. I want to talk to the teens because, listen, I am very upset about teen relationship violence. That's another kind of violence that's on the rise right now. I don't like it. I don't want to preserve our young people because you are our future. All of you need to be of sound mind and great character, okay, to lead this country later on. So I want to specifically look at teen violence and teen relationships and indicators that you could use to spot these wolves in sheep's clothing. Does he criticize what you wear? Does he criticize what you do? Does he criticize your friends? Does he act jealous when you talk to others? Does he act jealous when you talk to your friends? Does he try to control who you talk to? Does he control who you go out with? Does he get angry or violent very easily? Does he try to force you into having sex? Does he try to pressure you to drink drugs or alcohol, take drugs or alcohol? Does he threaten to physically hurt you? Or someone you care about? Does he abuse you emotionally, physically, and then he says, oh, I'm sorry. Or he says, look what you made me do. Huh? Does he call you names? Like, fat. Man, you too fat. Man, you stupid, eh? You ugly, you lazy. Does he say these things to you? Ladies, young people, listen. These are the warning signs. Get out! Get out! Okay? End it now! Otherwise, you will feel trapped. You will be so trapped in the relationships you can't think, you can't perform, you can't do anything. Please, get out. Okay? And remember, you know why you're getting out and why you're ending it now? Because Love does not hurt. Love does not, and it should not, make you feel less than. It does not 
tear you down. Love builds. It does not emotionally scar you, but it creates beautiful, lasting memories. Sisters, know your worth. Do not settle for crumbs from the king's table. Okay? Take that step. Take that step to talk to each other if you have to. And equip yourselves to take the step to move on and chase your dreams. Starting with a life free of abuse. End it now. End it now. Now, of course, no relationship is perfect. We know that, right? Some relationships are a work in progress. Yeah. But I stand with all of you here today, NGOs, members of our civil society, uh, members from the Department of Social Services, as we avail ourselves as your brothers and sisters keepers. We do that here today. We start with you here today as your brothers and sisters keepers. Remember that. You have somewhere to go and someone to go to. All right? Because you need a support system. You need that. And we're here. They say it takes a village. We are the village. Right? The NGOs. Yes. Civil society, the Ministry of Social Services, your pastors, your mentors, your parents, the neighbor who talks to people and gives them good advice, the village. We're here for you. And I encourage all of you that we must do more to respond to the many cries for justice, especially of women and girls who have suffered violence and abuse, be it physical or psychological. We have to combine our efforts like we're doing here today to put an end to these horrendous abuses, okay? We must end it now because Violence is an obstacle to achieving equality. Right. It's an obstacle to your development. It's an obstacle for peace. It's an obstacle to work for women to fulfill their human rights, their God-given rights. When you're being abused and violated, and you cannot, you cannot achieve the fulfillment of your God-given right. So, to all of you here today, as Miss Dean from Dignified Woman, that's one of our charities, I'll never forget what she said. Miss Dean, she said, you are special. Dignified girls, you are special. Remember, remember, fearfully and wonderfully made, okay? And the God didn't make you for in a spirit of fear. He made you and not, no timidness. He made you strong and to face your obstacles. All right? Jeremiah, this is it here. Chapter 29, verse 11. This is what God said for all of us. For I know the plans I have for you. They are plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a hope and not a future. Now with a promise like that from God, with a promise like that, a living promise like that, who can go wrong? None of us can go wrong. Okay? He has not put the spirit of fear in you. He has put plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So, Gender-based violence, the major part being domestic violence, we can stop all those bulls and sheep's clothing. Most of all, we'll speak up, we'll break the silence, okay? And what are we going to do from now? End, End it now. now! One more time. End, End it now. now! Yes, yes. That's what I want to hear. That's the spirit. Because I'm going to end it now too. Okay, so listen. <laughs> I better not say any more. I have another two pages, but that's too long. So I'll stop right here. We're going to end it now. And I thank you, all of you, for listening to me. And I hope I have made an impact. 
and a difference to all of you here this evening. I thank you very much. We end it now is a global initiative to raise awareness and advocate for the end of violence around the world. And today in all of our Adventist churches, the words end it now were echoed. In the South Bahamas Conference, we brought awareness in our local churches, and then we took to the streets to encourage the communities to end it now. And here we are, and Mistress Davis just brought a powerful message. And so we want to thank you for helping us to identify the wolves in sheep's clothing and giving us ways to avoid them and for reminding us to exercise our self-control and believing when someone shows us who they are the first time. We also want to thank you for reminding us that we are masterpieces and that we must always know our worth and to obey the voice of God always. And so we promise to, break, to speak up and break the silence so that we can end it now. So, Mr. Davis, on behalf of the Women's Ministries team and the members of the South Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, we just want to thank you for stopping by and helping us with this initiative to end it now. And so we want to present you with a very small token of our appreciation that we know you would love. I saw you have something similar so you can add this to your collection.
to prevent gender-based violence in the communities and to ensure the survivors of gender-based violence receive life-saving support and quality service for recovery. Also, to address interventions to restore perpetrators into productive citizens. Another launch, I would say launch, because it's already passed through the House of Assembly and the Senate. And, I, I, and Senator can attest to this one, is the Protection of Violence Bill. You know, this is still on the table, so if you have any comments, or if you read it, and if you want to send in your views um, to the Minister of Social Services, he's open to it. Okay, I know he's still meeting with NGOs, but the Protection of Violence Bill will facilitate the provision of care and support services for victims of violence through shelters, counseling services, and for affected children. And so I'm happy about that because shelter is a serious problem in this country. There are so many women with children in need of somewhere to go. And so I'm happy for this, which will have a commission who will now agitate and advocate for shelters and funding and so forth to assist the victims who are in need. The abuse of women and girls is pervasive. If left unaddressed, will create chaos in our communities. Women and girls are disproportionately affected because of the multiple forms of violence that is perpetrated against them. One of the root causes, according to research, is the dominant patriarchal system, and we heard Madam talk about it earlier, that society has created since the early times, and that was created from since in the Bible days. The inherent evil of chauvinism acts that we see perpetrated in the homes, on the streets, is one of the major causes of domestic violence. The English common law is entrenched in the concept of women as property of men. The Sexual Offenses Act proves that. That's chapter 99, and you can read it in section three of the Sexual Offenses Act, chapter 99, which reflects the definition of rape, including marital exempt. So which means that every Woman in the Bahamas is protected except a woman in a, in a marriage, okay? And so this is what all this marital rape talk is all about. So you can go into the laws and read it for yourself and see where that particular woman is exempted from rape. Let us protect our women and girls from violence and abuse. Let's follow the principles of Jesus in John chapter eight, when he protected a woman from being stoned by the scribes and the Pharisees. He said to them, he that is without sin, cast the first stone. And I know you know what I'm talking about. When that young lady was brought by all these group of strong men to Jesus, Jesus rebuked those men and he protected that woman. In Genesis chapter one, men and women are equally made in the image and likeness of God and they both need his grace and salvation. So when we talk about equality, when you when hear about gender equality, we're talking about women and men have the same type of participation in their country, in the workforce, in leadership, in politics. They have the same kind of, of participation that they're not left out because they are women. Okay, I know when we talk about gender equality, you think we are talking about all these other things. But we're talking about women being able to receive the same pay as men if they have the same education. You know, if they have the same education and they're doing the job, let them get the same pay as, as the men. I think they have made some corrections or some addition to um, the labor laws as relates to that. But um, it, it should happen, okay? So that's what we're talking about. And so when you hear gender equality, that is exactly what all of them are entitled to the same things, anything, the economics, everything, okay? And so I'm coming to an end right now because I know Madam said everything, okay? Madam, Madam said everything that was supposed to have been said about violence, and she has already given you all a charge so 
know, I'm just going to say that, <laughs> I'm just going to say that the Bahamas will be safe when every woman and girl are free from human trafficking, free from rape, free from indecent assault, free from abduction, free from sexual harassment, free from assault, free from murder, murder, which is a heavy, heavy, heavy cost. It's a cost to all of us, not only the family of the victim, it's a cost to you, because when a woman is murdered and she leaves those little small children and there's no one to take care of them, then the society has to take care of them, the government has to take care of them. So our taxes, that means they have to raise taxes, um, to take care of these children that we have to pay. So all of us should be concerned when we see people are being beaten. Don't just record it. Don't just record it and send it out on social media. Okay, we need to have some kind of love out there. Some kind of empathy. Some kind of respect. You know, as a, as a former police superintendent, I walked through many, many murder scenes. And so I hear the cries of the mother. I hear the cries of those children. And that is what kept me going from 20, from 2020. This is what kept me going. Because I see what is happening out there. And we need to work together to minimize it. Okay, so I'm going to say to you, let us end it now. That's right. Thank you. Good evening and happy Sabbath, everyone. I pray that this song is an encouragement that we know that in majesty, Jesus will come.
most gracious Father, ruler of heaven and earth. Father, you are the author and indeed the finisher of our faith. We come bowing here in reverence to you, Holy One, recognizing that there is nothing too big for you to handle. You are a God who cannot fail. You are a God who hands does not change. So just how you stood in the fire with the three Hebrew boys and shut the lion's mouth for Daniel and stop parted, parted the Red Sea for the Israelites to reach to safety. You are the exact same God who is now listening to our prayer. Father, we are asking you to listen to our prayer this afternoon and also attend unto our cry. We realize, oh Father, that there are many persons who suffer abuse. And we do not just speak about physical abuse and call it a good night. We are talking about psychological, emotional abuse also. We are even talking about environmental abuse. Father, there are abuses that are subtly creeping up upon persons. Lady Davis spoke about there are signs and sometimes we sit there hoping and yes, 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 praying that something will change. But Father, we are placing the abused persons before you now, not just women. We have men, we have children also who are abused. So, Father, right now, right now, O oh great Jehovah, our provider, we ask you, O oh Father, to grant unto the persons who are abused hope. Father, that they will recognize, as your word says, that no matter what it is, Mark 11, 24, if, 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 we believe when we pray, we shall receive. So, Father, this is not just a prayer where we are saying some words. We are praying, oh God, and joining hands, Father, believing, oh God, that you are going to rescue someone tonight. We are praying, oh God, that someone will understand, oh God, that they do not have to be subjected to any form of abuse. Father, you are a God, big and mighty all by yourself. We are asking you to saturate the minds and the hearts of persons, oh God, who have been abused, Father. Persons who are right now being abused. Father, and we come and we congregate week after week, Sabbath after Sabbath, Sunday after Sunday, and do not even recognize that the person sitting right next to us is being abused. So Father, we cancel the silence factor right now and we grant holy boldness, oh Father, to any abused person under the sound of our voice, any abused person anywhere in this Bahama land, oh God, grant them, oh God, the boldness, oh Father, to stand up and squash the silence. We are not waiting for death to come upon them, oh God. This is the time here and now for them to walk away. The, the pack 
children. So, Father, we, we pray and we come in agreement as we now join hands, lifting up our hands, oh God, thanking you boldly in advance, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing while this prayer is being offered and for what you're going to do. assistance 
and guidance with this event. Thank you, ladies, and may God bless you. A special mess, a special mention goes out to the Royal Bahamas Police Force Traffic Division for their presence and assistance. Thank you to the Royal Bahamas Defense Force Caribbean Modeling Company for their kind donations. Thank you, Mr. Ray Jennings, for your working tirelessly behind the scenes to ensure the smooth flow of this event. Your professionalism and dedication has contributed to the success of this program. For our tech personnel, give them a round of applause for the awesome music during the motorcade. I would like to say thank you to Sister Karen Ramos and my dear sister Vern Bean for the decorations here this afternoon. And we extend our gratitude to the South Bahamas Media Conference Media Department and all other media houses for their coverage as their outreach will help spread the message far and wide. The spotlight you shine on our cause amplifies our efforts and encourages more people to join this End It Now initiative. Last and certainly not least, our appreciation is extended to all of our civic organizations, church organizations that have joined hands with us today. Please give them a round of applause. I would like all of my leaders to stand. All of the Women's Ministries leaders in the South Bahamas Conference, please stand and wave. Give us a wave. Thank you so much for your support, and thank you, sisters, and all of the members. In conclusion, let us remember that this event is just one step in our country towards a world of compassion, respect, and safety for all. As we disperse from here, let the spirit of End It Now remain with us, guiding our actions and fueling our determination to create a better future. And in benediction, I say, may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Blessings. Amen.